Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. I'll never forget this date 58 years ago. They let us out from school early that day because President Kennedy had been assassinated in Dallas. He was riding in an open convertible in Dallas, and it was quite warm in the mountains of New Mexico where I was living as well. Before you continue watching this video, I should let you know that the YouTube version is not the complete video. I can't show everything from the video here because YouTube would probably use it as an excuse to shut me down. But if you want to watch the complete video, you can see it several other places. And I've included links to those videos in the description below. The autumn of 1963 was by far the warmest on record in the United States. October and November afternoon temperatures in the United States warmed quite a bit from the 1920s until the mid-1960s. But after 1965, temperatures dropped sharply and never recovered. The coldest autumn was in 2018. During October and November of 1963, 42% of afternoon temperatures recorded in the United States were over 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And more than one-fifth of days were over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The autumn of 1963 was quite remarkable in the United States. The heat was associated with a massive drought that stretched from the Rocky Mountains up into New England and down into Texas. And actually, the 1963 drought covered much of the world. Parts of Asia were hit hardest. The National Geographic Society says more than 300,000 Pakistanis were forced to abandon their homes in West Pakistan to seek food and water as famine followed a prolonged dry spell. The drought also struck Burma, Malaysia, and China. Brazil was hit very hard by the 1963 drought as well. In Texas, 1963 was the driest year since 1917. It was the worst drought of the century in Brazil and shrank river levels to dangerous lows. There were also terrible fires burning over much of the northeastern U.S. during the autumn of 1963. Carbon dioxide levels were pretty low in 1963, so history once again doesn't comply very well with the alarmist narrative. A worldwide drought occurring when CO2 levels were low would indicate that something else is controlling the climate. Now let's look at a different narrative from November 22, 1963. Let's take a look at what the press was reporting on that afternoon. The shooting occurred as Mr. Kennedy and his wife were riding through a crowd of 250,000 people in downtown Dallas. As the limousine neared the triple underpass leading toward the trademark where Mr. Kennedy was to address a lunch, three bursts of gunfire sounded. Motorcycle police raced up the grassy knoll of a park nearby where a man and woman were huddled. The key things to note in this description are three bursts of gunfire and the grassy knoll is where the police ran. The weapon which Lee Harvey Oswald was supposed to have used in the shooting was an Italian Carcano rifle, like this one. I own one of these. It's a bolt-action rifle with a clip that holds six rounds. It's by far the most inaccurate rifle I've ever fired. It makes a huge spread even at relatively short distances. A burst of gunfire implies several shots in very rapid succession. There's no way to make even one burst of gunfire from a bolt-action rifle, much less three of them in a row. And remember, the clip only holds six rounds. The Secret Service agents who were at the scene thought the gunfire came from an automatic weapon up on the grassy knoll. That afternoon, the press was universally reporting Kennedy shot in right temple from three bursts of gunfire. And the motorcycle police raced up the grassy knoll of a park nearby. That afternoon, one of the White House press secretaries held a news conference at Parkland Hospital where President Kennedy died. John F. Kennedy died at approximately 1 o'clock Central Standard Time today here in Dallas. He died of a gunshot wound in the brain. Dr. Berkman told me it's a, it's a, a simple matter, Tom, of, uh, of a bullet right through the head. And here's the transcript from that press conference. This document is located in the LBJ libraries. How many times was the president shot? The president was shot once in the head. Where did the shots come from? They came from the right side. Can you say where the bullet entered his head? It's my understanding that it entered in the temple, the right temple. 
Shortly thereafter, the official story was rewritten to say that Kennedy was killed by a shot from the rear. And that wasn't the only story from November 22, 1963, which was officially rewritten. At the time, the Boston Globe discussed the grassy knoll. But now, according to the Boston Globe, the grassy knoll is simply a conspiracy theory. Over the next few weeks, the story was changed from a bullet coming from the right side to a bullet fired by Lee Harvey Oswald from the rear. And three days later, Lee Harvey Oswald was assassinated under police custody by Jack Ruby. The assassination of Lee Harvey Oswald occurred live on television, and I remember very vividly watching it as it happened. So who was this guy, Jack Ruby, who walked right up to a suspect under police custody and assassinated him? Ruby asked an FBI informant on the morning of the JFK assassination if he wanted to go watch the fireworks. It sounds like Jack Ruby knew that something big was going to happen in downtown Dallas that morning. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested a few hours later watching a movie at a movie theater. The press described his watching a movie as hiding in the back of a dark theater. He acted very surprised about being arrested and insisted that he had nothing to do with it. The U.S. press immediately started saying he did this because he was a communist. And the Soviet press immediately started blaming right-wingers for the assassination. Basically the same strategy recently used by Joe Biden to stir up racial hatred and violence in Wisconsin. Biden announced that Kyle Rittenhouse was a white supremacist without knowing a single fact about the situation. But the topic of this video is the murder which occurred in 1963, not the mass murder which occurred in Wisconsin yesterday. On November 25, 1963, Jack Ruby, who apparently knew the assassination was going to occur three days earlier, walked right up to Lee Harvey Oswald and shot him in front of the police as he was walking into the courthouse. These photographs look more like sitting duck than under police protection. When I was only six years old, I became keenly aware that the official narratives of government and the press could not be trusted. All of the facts that were reported by the press and the White House press secretary on November 22, 1963 are now officially conspiracy theory. If you even use the term grassy knoll now, you're labeled as a conspiracy nutcase. Even though there was a universal belief among law enforcement and the press on November 22, 1963, that the shot which killed President Kennedy was fired from the grassy knoll. President Kennedy said, A nation that's afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market is a nation that is afraid of its people. And that certainly explains the state of propaganda and censorship which currently exists in the United States. Toto understands that whether it's covering up the worldwide drought of 1963 or covering up the details of the assassination, you can normally be pretty certain that the official story has little or nothing to do with reality. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.